Cataractcoach.com. Quiz time. What is the size of this Caps Rexes? Too small, too big, or just right? So let's watch the creation of this. We're using the chopper on the left hand to fixate the eye so it doesn't move. And we're going to create our capsule rexus here in the anterior lens capsule. Try to keep our rexus centered on that Purkinje light reflex. And we'll continue this rexus here, grabbing it with the forceps. Good pivoting. The patient's paying better attention now so we can take the chopper out of the paresthesis. And we'll continue our capsule rexus just like that. And the quiz question for this week is, is this caps rexus too big, too little, or just about right? And from reference, we're aiming to make about a five and a half millimeter caps rexus. The lens optic is gonna be six millimeters, so we don't want it to be bigger than that. And four millimeters would be too small of a caps rexus. So there's the lens nucleus. Now in relation to the pupil size and the white to white diameter of the eye, even the lens size, that rexus may look a little bit on the small side. It's smaller than we anticipated. There's the lens nucleus. We can buzz in the center of it. We're going to tilt it out of the capsule bag and chop it up into pieces. And we can emulsify this relatively quickly. In our modern era of these fancy FACO machines, which have exquisite fluidic control and very pre precise delivery of ultrasonic energy, we're able to really emulsify uh, the lens in a very efficient manner. So there's the remainder of the lens nucleus coming up, epinucleus shell left as well. We can aspirate some of that, but the rest we'll just get with the IA probe. Now as we switch over to the IA probe and we remove the lens cortex and epinucleus from the eye, we'll be able to see that caps rexus even more. So again, there's the IA probe going inside the eye, mushing down a little piece of lens nucleus and then here's grabbing the cortex and residual epinuclear shell. And we'll aspirate that down very nicely. As we finish aspirating this down, again, we'll see the capsorexis margin pretty clearly. And then again, we have another good view here. You tell me, is this rexus going to be too small, too big, or just right? And again, cleaning up all the lens material. We'll get a much better view here. And the reason, keep in mind, the reason we want to have it overlap in the optic is it'll help hold the eye well in a secure position and a more predictable, effective lens position, important for lens calculations. We want to avoid too small of a capsorexis because that can help lead to phimosis of the anterior capsule rim. It can also block some of the peripheral um, lens if the patient has large dilation. So let's fill up the capsule bag with our um, cohesive viscoelastic. And there we see the rexus edge. Here comes the IOL. And this is where we have a little bit of a surprise. This is a full-size IOL with a 6 millimeter optic. But look how small the lens looks. The lens looks quite small. This patient has a very large white to white measurement of about 13 millimeters. This is a very myopic patient. This eye well that's going in the eye is a power of only eight diopters. And therefore this patient probably had about minus 10 diopters of preoperative myopia. So a large myopic eye, the patient also dilates very well. So it seemed like a relatively small capsorexis at the beginning of the case. Turns out to be just about perfect. And if you look carefully, that overlap on top of the optic is great for 360 degrees. So this is probably about a five and a half millimeter capsorexis. And again, it's very well centered. And this is just about perfect for this eye. And the lens looks so small because this is a big eye. There are lenses that are available in the US of six and a half millimeters in diameter for a foldable lens, rigid lenses up to seven millimeters. But in this case, due to the patient's pupil size, even in dark conditions, it didn't get more than six millimeters. This lens is a great choice. And then there it is, the optic overlap by the capsorexis looks perfect. So the answer to the quiz is, this capsorexis is just right.